Hey guys, I am back. So Titus has agreed to talk to me and answer a few questions. We had an amazing breakfast, and I was telling you on the way while coming to this hotel that I'm going to attempt at asking you some questions, and I hope it's okay. It's absolutely fine. Great. Titus has been in the IT industry for two, more than 27 years. He worked for companies like Tata, Lexi, yeah, IBM, HP, Oracle. Now he is director of global alliances with Microfocus. So, Titus, the goal and the objective of this session is very simple. I want to ask you a few questions around alliances, a little bit about your role. Then maybe if you can share a little bit about what are the challenges, what are the priorities. So let me start by asking you did your engineering right in electronics and communication yes am i right yes okay so when was that i mean i think that was almost like uh, 92 did you complete yes i passed out of college in 1992 and uh, from electronics and uh, had my first job through campus uh, it was with a sarag by group uh, a company name was uh, org systems Uh, so I was managing. I in fact started as a customer support engineer, and uh, I was managing uh, the post sales support for customers based out of uh, UP. Now you did electronics and communication. Did you ever think this is what you're going to be doing, or when you were doing it engineering, you had some other plans? I always wanted to be in the IT industry. Uh, that is for sure. Uh, but i never uh, realized that i am going to be uh, in the in the sales uh, side of the business uh, uh, but i think uh, uh, while doing my job uh, my manager said that you are more fit towards sales uh, and and he said i would want you to move to sales and uh, so that's how you know i i uh, moved to sales uh, as a as a role and since then uh, you know it's been uh, over 20 20 years that i've been into sales uh, and i'm enjoying thoroughly so that takes me to the next question so you have been in sales managing sales organization for so many years when did this shift to alliances take place was it by chance or did you plan it i mean how did that happen and how many years i think it's been it should be 3 years now or more than that uh slightly more than that uh as far as alliances goes uh it was not planned for sure uh i think uh, uh, my turning point was and as you rightly said that you know i worked for some of the large uh it uh, brands like hp ibm and oracle but i also had a chance or an opportunity to work with some of the startups uh when i say startups uh, uh, what i mean was that uh, Uh, the company existed in us but they were not present in this part of the world and uh, so i was sort of first employee to start the business in in uh, you know asia or south asia and uh, and that is when i learned that uh, you know uh, getting an appointment or a meeting is so challenging uh, unlike the large brands like hp oracle where you don't have to sort of tell who you are what you do uh when you work with these startups uh, you have to prepare that 60 minute uh, 60 second pitch where uh, the customers or partner get excited and they are ready to meet you uh, i think that uh, you know makes you a very good sales person uh, so that was the turning point for me and uh, since i've done direct sales uh, i also had an exposure where i was managing the large channel partner ecosystem alliances was the only role which i had never done though i have never planned it but there was an opportunity uh, which knocked my door and uh, i thought why not and uh, it's been an exciting journey in alliances as well and i completely agree because after i moved out from a corporate career and i started my own uh, company i can completely relate to it how difficult it is to get an appointment but yeah it's been an interesting and exciting journey a lot of learning right and i am very happy what with what i am doing today right so, so let's move to the core of uh, what we want to talk about today so alliances right according to you what is alliance how do you define alliance in your own way i think uh, uh, alliances is definitely a sales role so it may be an overlay but it is a sales role and uh, organization sees a lot of value in the alliances because if you see any mid to large enterprises today they will have the alliances organization and uh, uh, i think the factor which drives the alliances is that any gsi 
has a very large presence in India. Uh, given that offshore large presence in India, there is lot that alliance organization can do in influencing uh, them in the early part of sales cycle, where you become a part of you know the solutions they propose and generate those additional revenue for the organization. So uh, I would say that alliance is very much a sales organization supporting uh, you know sales as a function. Are you loving it? Is the transition to alliances? been uh, fun for you is it been challenging for you just from alliances perspective are you happy i'm happy uh, i'm definitely very happy and when i started i always had this uh, uh, you know question uh, when you uh, when you have been a direct sales person you had the control on most of the situation as in you are engaging with customer and you know where you are in that deal being in an alliances role you are too much dependent on partner uh, partners also have a large organization so the guys that you are engaging is the alliance organization within partner and then uh, they have uh, the sales organization which is front ending with customer so uh, uh, you have to sort of uh, be dependent on them as to where you are in the deal uh, which and how do you forecast your uh, revenue and so on and so forth so initially those were the uh, you know points which sort of came to my mind but i think uh, uh, as as things get evolved and matured uh, uh, you started pu- putting yourself in their shoes and try to see that you know how are you helping them in achieving their kras i'm so happy to know that uh, you know you actually fell in love with alliances if i may say so but you know a lot of people in our community also in like alliances community also they say that alliances is a thankless job it's so difficult to provide value people are not taken very seriously people are always asking where are the deals there are so many things right which you have to do part of alliances uh, you know build long term relationship build solutions uh, stakeholder management so on and so forth so my question is very straight forward mm-hmm. is it a thankless job it is certainly not a thankless job and as i mentioned a while ago that uh, every organization now have uh, alliances as a business unit and they certainly see alliances bringing that additional revenue which was otherwise not visible uh, typically uh, you being an alliance role uh, you know your day start early uh, if you are managing that uh, particular account or, or partner globally and uh, you 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 start with the nz which is early the noon the you know europe comes up evening us wakes up and you start collaborating with the us team so uh, it's it's just a long day but then you do get a lot of breaks in between where you can you know uh, sort of do other things uh, coming to your point uh, you have to be smart to coordinate uh, the internal stakeholders uh, and also manage the uh, partners uh, Uh, I can quote c- certain examples. So, so let's say you create certain offering, uh, which is very unique, and a partner sees a value in that offering, and then partner agrees that okay, uh, I want to identify maybe these ten or twenty accounts, and I want to take this to the market, and uh, and uh, you go and help uh, initially uh, in uh, in pitching those uh, you know in two three accounts. you see the response coming from those customers and then you suddenly see that you know there is all seven eight customers who have shown interest and then you have one or two customers who sort of got converted and that's the time when things start changing mm. so you have your own sales team who get excited that uh, okay here is uh, you know something which has come up which has not been planned or thought of a uh, partner gets excited that now they have a new offering which they can take it to the market and is working for them so there's a lot of appreciation uh, you know all around so it's certainly not a thank you so yesterday on linkedin gaurav mehta from suntech yeah he was rewarded as one of the best employee and he comes from alliances gaurav congratulations by the way well done if i read it right you got president's award twice uh, am i right is this part of alliances uh, job it it, it is uh, since uh, any alliance role get, uh, is is a revenue uh, carrying quota role uh, and there is uh, you know if you if you cross uh, 120% of your numbers you are qualified for 
uh, President's Club. So yes, uh, last two years has been uh, good for me. Yes. So looks like that's the reason you are enjoying alliances. One is appreciation, and second is the money, I guess. So <laughs> won't deny uh, that completely. Yeah, yeah. No. So uh, good to know. You just talked about stakeholder management, and according to you, what is more important? internal stakeholder or external stakeholder because i know we are supposed to manage both and it's taken for granted that internal guys will understand but in your experience what is more difficult i think both have their own set of challenges uh, if i look at my uh, uh, you know sales uh, person i have been a direct sales person so i understand that you know you have a target to achieve you are on your quarterly number and uh, you want to win and you want want to win fast so the moment your sales team starts seeing that here is a guy who can help you in deals and help you win fast uh, they will start liking you they will start loving you they'll start working with you i think uh, if you if you play smart if you do a right balancing act uh, you can make them both uh, happy uh, there will be situations where things may not work out as you have envisaged which happens so uh, which is which is perfectly fine uh, you know move on uh, uh, but i think yeah uh, managing internal stakeholders uh, is important uh, as well as managing the you know the partner community but it's uh, absolutely possible would well, you suggest the sales guys to opt for alliances job if there's an opportunity i think sales guy would definitely uh, make alliances role uh, Uh, a very successful role because uh, they have gone through the entire sales cycles themselves and they understand how critical it is to map the entire customer scenario how to uh, have the complete sales process where you get a lead you qualify make an opportunity understand the problem statement go to customer with the solution okay let me shift gears a little bit what are some of the key responsibilities or key initiatives you are driving uh, on a daily basis so what we have done is we have divided our task into uh, uh, short term and the long term uh, short term is definitely associated with the revenue and long term is where you uh, work on a strategy with the partner where uh, they create some kind of ip on your platform and it's it's a long shot but then once that happens then you start getting the rec- recurring revenue so that's important to have uh, short term is definitely uh, around that uh, you know how do you uh, work with partner and create a healthy pipeline which gives you some kind of a quarterly turnover uh, <clears throat> so one of the way is that uh, uh, once uh, your solution is part of uh, the partner's offering so there are typically two three kind of situation one is that partner uh, works on lot of uh, total outsourcing deals and uh, <clears throat> when they respond to rfps uh, your products and solutions are part of their uh, offering uh, but having said that uh, rfp business is very digital in nature so uh, you may be very happy that you have 30 40 50 million dollar pipeline which is rfp but uh, it might be the case that the conversion is less than 5% so the ideal situation is to have certain uh, offering which you take to the market with partner proactively it could be an existing account for the partner where you are trying to do cross sell up sell uh, the conversion of those opportunities is much higher so uh, uh, i would uh, strongly suggest that you know have a balance of uh, both short term and long term okay now what about challenges now yes alliance manager goes through many challenges many low moments uh, things are not happening <laughs> solutions are not happening deals are not happening and then uh, there is a sales team and the management is not appreciating some of there are moments like that yes so two questions one what are those challenges and and how do you overcome that or or how do you suggest people overcome that i think i would uh, uh, say the typical challenge is in any uh, given organization uh, as i mentioned you have a team which is responsible for direct sale uh, then you are also working with partner which is a global si uh, then you also have these regional sis right so you have direct sales regional sis and global sis and 
so how do you you know uh, ensure that uh, there is a balancing act between these so that's that's one uh, second uh, could be that uh, <coughs> most of the uh, uh, global SIs uh, they are large organization that makes it complex uh, typically you will see that most of these uh, uh, global SIs when they go to US it is a vertical market the moment they move to Europe, it is a geo-specific market. So how do you create an offering uh, which takes care of geo versus verticals, right? So that's one more challenge. Uh, another challenge which I foresee is that uh, uh, most of these global SIs have the alliances which is business unit-wise. So for example, you have cyber security, so you have alliances for cyber security you have infrastructure team, you have application team and they and DevOps and testing and you have alliances. Now <clears throat> it's, it's great to work with business unit because it's a very focused uh, approach uh, but typically if you look at any large complex RFP it will cut across multiple business unit right and in, in many situations we have seen that uh, out of those multiple business unit and alliances that we're working with you get just one or two of them who comes to you that you know here is an RFP, here is the customer, this is the ask, uh, how do we respond, how can you help us with the response. Now <clears throat> there are certain GSIs who also have corporate alliances team. Now the advantage of that corporate alliances is it cut across all the business unit, right? So if you work at that level, you get a view of complete RFP. Now organization that I work for. Uh, we are one of the largest infrastructure software company and uh, <clears throat> we cut across multiple uh, you know uh, business units so if we get an RFP which is at a corporate uh, uh, alliances label we can contribute into the multiple uh, solutions within the RFP the advantage that uh, we get is see uh, it's a 200 million RFP you are perhaps a million dollar in that but the moment you get a, uh, the entire view of that RFP, you suddenly become five, six million. So your stake goes high. The benefit to partners is you don't have to communicate with multiple OEMs and, uh, to get the solution in place. You don't have to worry whether these solutions will work together and integrate because now you're getting a very large piece from one organization. So I feel uh, having a corporate alliance is, is, is definitely a good thing to have. Okay, so uh, Titus, let me ask another question. If you had to hire a alliance person in your team, what would be those qualities would you look for? Just the key important qualities you would look for. I think uh, he should have an ability. Uh, he or she. He or she uh, should have an ability to, uh, you know, put yourself in partner shoes and, you know, think through it. Uh, I think... Uh, uh, it's important to gain trust, so you have to be very transparent with a partner. Uh, you know, uh, persistent follow-up uh, kind of ability, perseverance pace, so uh, uh, <clears throat> understand the pain point, a strong relationship person. I think these are some of the things uh, uh, which will definitely make you a great uh, you know, alliance person. So is MicroFocus hiring uh, by any chance in the alliances space? We, uh, uh, I'm here in a personal <laughs> capacity so I won't comment for them but uh, uh, we are a growing organization definitely and uh, we are always looking for people, yes. Okay guys, so you know if you're looking for some interesting opportunities you know whom to contact. So Tidus, first of all thank you so much. I know you have uh, an appointment to go to, but you took out some time. I know after breakfast, uh, I surprised you and I came prepared with all my gadgets. You know, I usually keep it in my car just in case if I have to shoot something, I'm glad it worked. So thank you so much for your time and answering these questions. I hope you liked it and looking forward to bringing another person in this format where we ask an alliance leader about their roles and responsibilities in, in their uh, work. So, Titus, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nayad. Alliance rocks. <laughs>